Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and it is Saturday, August 1st and guess what it is time for. I know some of you probably said the new sheet load of cards and don't worry, that is coming, but I am here today with a special collaboration that I wanted to have its very own special time. So sheet load is just getting pushed back a little bit today so you have time to watch this video. Today I'm going to be collaborating with Ricky of Bromero Cards as part of my Inspired Saturdays series. I hope you'll stick around, find out more why I chose Ricky, see how he inspired me and then find out how you can go to his channel and see how I inspired him. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Before I ever made Inspired Saturdays official with the call for collaborators here on YouTube, I had reached out to a couple people on Instagram to see if they would be interested in joining me for a Saturday to be inspired by each other. One of those people that I reached out to was Ricky of Bro Marrow Cards. Now, if you're not already subscribed to Ricky here on YouTube, and if you don't follow him on his Instagram account, I hope that you'll go do that as soon as you're done with our videos today. Both his YouTube channel and his Instagram account will be linked below. I'm not sure how I ever found Ricky on Instagram, but I have to tell you that as soon as I saw his work and saw his stories, I had to follow him. He is always so genuine and caring. He can be funny, he can be serious, and boy, can he make a card. So I was beyond excited when he said he would join me for an Inspired Saturday. If you've never seen one of my Inspired Saturdays collaborations, what I do is I team up with one crafty YouTuber most Saturdays, I do skip some, and we are each inspired by the other to create a new project and share it with you here on YouTube. Now if after watching the videos today, you're a crafty YouTuber who would like to join me, I will link the official Call for Collaborators video below. I do have some openings in October through the end of the year, and I would love to have you join me. For my card today, I am going to be inspired by the card that you see on screen now. A lot of Ricky's cards caught my eye, but as soon as I saw this, I had to stop and I knew that this was the one I was going to take inspiration from. If you've been around my channel for very long, you know that I love clear things and I love vellum. Well, another thing I have a weak spot for is like the United States outline or individual state outlines. So this card definitely made me zero in on it. Now today, I won't be using stamped states, but I'm going to use this same concept with the black and white stamping in the background and then highlighting one of those images. I will have Ricky's original Instagram post linked below and also linked below is his video for today where he's going to be inspired by me. That is right at the top of my description box. You can click on it and head on over there when you're done here. But until then, let me tell you a little bit about the supplies that I'm going to be using. In front of me are the main supplies. If I add anything later, I will be sure to let you know. For my stamp set today, and it's actually a stamp and cut set, I will be using this Hero Art set. It has lots of fun, just little crafty sentiments that have to do with glue. Now if you think this is an adorable set too, make sure you keep watching because I'm going to tell you how you can win one of these for yourself. I will be doing a little bit of basic coloring on my images with my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. I chose number 70 orange number 302 haze blue, number 32 Persian blue, and then my colorless blender. My sentiment will be stamped in white heat embossed on this blue scrap of paper and I will be die cutting that with this speech bubble. For my card itself, I got out a scrap of Strathmore Bristol Smooth to stamp and color my image on. I got out a top fold white card base, 
and I got out another piece of white cardstock that is four by five and a quarter. Once I start the process, I will go to a voiceover, so make sure if I leave you with any questions that you leave those in the comment section below. Let's get crafty. Off camera, I did go ahead and place four of the images from the stamp set onto my stamp block. And for my background, I will be using VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I did go ahead and pull out my Sizzix pad just because these stamps don't have cushion. That helps get a nice image. Now, I should say that I probably should have put a piece of white paper on this to capture any excess ink, but live and learn. Now I'm going to stamp my background cardstock. The only thing I do know is that I want that little glue bottle to be in the lower right. So I ink up my stamp, get my first placement adjusted, and stamp that onto the white cardstock. Once that's done, I then just continue to ink up my stamp and stamp it around the paper. I do try to make sure that I don't have the same image or the same icon next to itself on the background, but that was really the only thing that I focused on while stamping this. I did fill in some of the extra areas on there before I called it finished. While I still had out my Sizzix pad, I decided to go ahead and stamp my sentiment. I will be heat embossing this with white powder on the little blue speech bubble that I already cut out. Now I did pull in my embossing buddy just to make sure my powder only sticks to where I want it. And then I inked up my stamp and got it on there. Now after I poured the powder on it, I did notice I had a little white powder where my thumb was. So I just got out a dry brush and wiped that right off before I brought in my heat tool and heat set that. The next step in my process today is to die cut that one glue bottle that I made sure to have in the lower right hand corner. Now Ricky on his card, I believe he just used a circle, but I wanted to make use of these matching dies. So I placed that onto my card front with a little piece of scotch blue removable tape. If you've been around long, you know I love this stuff. And then I sent that die through my cuddle bug. Now, not only do I have an opening in my card, but I have a glue bottle for later to use on something different. Let me start off by saying that this might not be the easiest way to do what I wanted, but I need to have Strathmore Bristol Smooth to color my image. I just think it looks best on there when I use my zig markers, but I am too cheap to make my whole card out of that. So I cut a little scrap of that Bristol Smooth and then I placed it where it would be behind the opening on my card front. Once I had that in place, I pulled out my ATG and tacked that down. Now I'm gonna stamp my glue bottle once again, and this time I need it to be where that opening is on the card front. So that is why I got out my Misty for this instead of using my Sizzix pad. I really wanna make sure I get good placement. I bring in that stamp, place it in the opening and adjust it just a little bit till I think it will be good. Then I'm gonna pick it up with the door of the Misty and stamp it. I will be stamping my image in Versamark ink and embossing it with black detail embossing powder. For me, this just helps me stay in the lines while coloring. Once that's inked up, I poured the powder over it and then I pulled out my heat tool. And I will say that the card front got a little warped when I was heating this up. So I actually let it set inside of like a thick book I had for about 30 minutes while I ran an errand. Thank you to Kathy Zilski for that tip. It came out of there nice and super flat. And now I'm gonna color my image. Because I don't have a whole lot to say about this, I thought now would be a great time to let you know how you could win the Hero Arts stamp and cut set for yourself. First of all, you do need to be 18 years or older and live in the United States. Secondly, you need to be subscribed to my channel, and if you're not already, subscribe to Bromero Cards. Like I mentioned before, his channel is linked in the description box below. Now, if you are interested, this is how you're going to let me know. Give both of our videos a thumbs up and leave us each some kind of comment. And in there, make sure to leave the hashtag, hashtag inspired Saturdays. You do have to subscribe to us both and leave a comment on both of our videos. 
If you would like to be entered into the giveaway, you need to make sure that you leave your comments on both of our channels no later than midnight on Saturday, August 15th. I will then come back probably that next weekend to draw a winner. When I do draw the winner, I will confirm that they have left a comment on both channels with the hashtag, and then they will have a week to contact me to claim the prize. If it is not contacted that first time, I will do one redraw. Good luck. Now it's time to finish up the card. I will be adhering that front panel onto my card base with a piece of fun foam. Now to figure out where to cut my opening in the fun foam, I just brought in a pen and just did a rough drawing inside of that opening. Then I poked it with a pair of scissors and I cut out around that outline. I did actually try to punch this out with a circle punch, but unfortunately the fun foam would not fit in there. I then pulled out my art glitter glue and I adhered the fun foam to the back of the stamped piece and I set that side for about five minutes to dry. Once that was dry, I pulled back in that art glitter glue and I adhered it to the card front, making sure that my opening was centered nicely over the colored glue bottle on the front of the card. Then again, I set it to the side to let it dry. Once that was dry, it was time to finish my card. I started by adding my speech bubble to the card front. I just adhered that flat down on there and I could have stopped here, but you know me, I needed to add a little bling. So I brought in some orange gems from my stash that kind of matched the orange on the glue bottle and I added three of those to the front of the card. And here's a close up look at the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made today's card and seeing how Ricky inspired me. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go check out Ricky's channel. It's linked at the top of the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.